So we've got a brief break in the proceedings here after the House managers have presented part of their closing arguments. We believe that they've still got some time to go, and then we're going to hear closing arguments Mr. from the Brown. president's attorneys. Uh, we understand, I am told, that there will likely be a vote uh, whether to convict or acquit the president sometime this afternoon. Could come as early as three, maybe later in the afternoon. Let's go back to Chad Pergram. He's live at the Capitol on what is going on right now. Chad? Well, this is kind of a little bit of an unexpected turn of events. Uh, there was an argument here, and you might remember a couple of nights ago, Mike Lee uh, contested some of the things that House uh, impeachment managers said about him and this phone call with Tommy Tuberville, the Republican senator from Alabama, and the president uh, trying to get a hold of, of Tuberville and Lee's phone and vice versa. It was pretty confusing, and Lee was pretty upset about that. Lee again contesting uh, what is going on on the floor right now. Here's the problem. You might have heard Senator Leahy, who's presiding over the trial, saying that debate is not in order. The reason is that, you know, if you were operating as the usual Senate, uh, you could make a point of order saying the Senate is not operating properly. You could appeal the ruling of the chair. You could make a motion. But this is an impeachment trial. The Senate is sitting as a court of impeachment, and therefore, those rules do not apply in these circumstances. The Senate voted overwhelmingly uh, to approve the uh, framework for this trial, and it says that you are into these closing arguments right now by the impeachment managers and coming up soon, the defense counsel. And therefore, anything that Mike Lee wants to do just doesn't apply in this uh, circumstance. Uh, in fact, uh, somebody could probably argue that they shouldn't even be in a quorum call at this stage because, again, it doesn't apply for this. You heard at one point uh, one of the president's attorneys jump up and object uh, like you would in a regular courtroom. Again, that doesn't apply in these circumstances. This is not a regular courtroom. This is the United States uh, Senate. And what Senator Leahy was saying, that's an issue we can address later or you can address it in your closing remarks coming up. Uh, so they have to sort out this issue with Senator Mike Lee from Utah in the next couple of minutes. But again, to do a reset, uh, we're going to continue to hear from the impeachment managers making their closing arguments. They've put out this fire about witnesses that has been entered into the record, the statement by Jamie Herrera Butler, the Republican congresswoman from Washington state. And then we will hear from the president's defense counsel and sometime later this afternoon, the next actual vote should be an up or down vote on the guilt or innocence of the former president of the United States. And John. Chad, we got a little more clarity on how that whole thing went down in terms of calling witnesses. Senator Lindsey Graham uh, stepped out of the chamber to give me a quick call and run me through it. He said that uh, at about 11 o'clock last night, he got a call in which he was told that there would not be any witnesses. And he said, fine to that. And then apparently this article containing the statement from uh, Congresswoman Herrera Butler uh, started gaining a lot of traction. And the House managers looked and said, you know, maybe we've got the president's uh, legal team on the ropes here. Let's pummel them just a little bit more. Uh, so this morning, in a conference call, uh, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer was told uh, that uh, the left wing of the party was putting a lot of pressure on senators to allow witnesses. And that's when Raskin uh, came forward about an hour later and said, uh, we'd like to call at least one witness, Herrera Butler, and maybe some others. Uh, after that uh, all happened and pandemonium, as Senator Ted Cruz of Texas put it, uh, ensued, uh, Lindsey Graham floated the idea, of, OK, so let's just stipulate that we can put this statement from Herrera Butler that was circulating last night into the record. It's news that had been out there uh, for at least a number of days. The congresswoman attested to that herself. Lindsey Graham considered it to be hearsay evidence. And there was not an acknowledgment that it was true, just that they were going to enter the statement into the record. And so that compromise was struck and the statement was entered into the record. Republicans do really believe, though, that the Democrats, Chad, overplayed their hand here because they went out there and they got, they forced a vote on witnesses and then had to walk it back. So d does that really leave them, I, I don't want to say at a disadvantage, but with a little bit of egg on their face at the very least? Well, it, it kind of cuts two ways. Uh, first of all, it was interesting to see a Democratic aide uh, close to the impeachment process put out a statement. And, and the verb that was used in the statement was that they, they got the Republicans to concede that they should admit this evidence here, uh, just so they could put that into the record and have senators consider that as part of the overall trial record before the vote. So that was an important statement mm -hmm. there. But again, I, I look at the language being very important. And again, don't forget about the political consequences here and the political pressures, especially that the Democrats are feeling. They have a narrow majority. 
There are a lot of Democrats uh, on the left who would like to go to the mat with President Trump. There's others who are like, okay, this doesn't serve our purposes. We want to get on to coronavirus mm -hmm. aid, and we want to deal with maybe other issues like immigration or, or you know, working out infrastructure or something like that. Uh, this just continues uh, to be a problem. You have a divided Democratic Party here, and so these are the, you know, trying to walk in both sides of the street here, the Chuck Schumer yeah. and, and, frankly, Jamie Raskin, the, 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 the hand that they're trying to play. Stay with us, Chad, as I know you will. Right now, let's turn to a member of President Trump's, former President Trump's,